Well, the countdown is well and truly on. June the 1st, 2024. Decades of promotional rivalry will spill over into the boxing ring as Queensbury and Matram go head to head. Eddie Hearn pits five of his very best fighters against five of Frank Warren's best in a Riyadh season original one blockbuster night from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as I say, June 1st, with pride, reputation, promotional supremacy, and most of all, bragging rights at stake. In this one, Jamie Ward here alongside former WBC World Cruiserweight King, Tony Bellew, welcome to the Zone Boxing Show. Tony, when you think about the format, it's new, like I say, a Riyadh season original. Why is it something that, as a fighter, you think they'll be excited to be a part of? And they're going to get one over on each other. So the winner has bragging rights, and ultimately that's what... Uh, that's what counts, especially domestically. You know, everyone wants to be the best domestically and then you go into world rights. But if I'm being totally honest, these two are probably, at this moment in time, two of the biggest promoters in the world. Uh, and them going head-to-head -head with their own fighters is a, is a significant step forward. You've been around, Eddie, for, yeah. uh, for many years. You understand the rivalry between these two. Although it's pretty pally now, but how much will Eddie not want to lose to Frank Warren in this? They're both uh, egotistical maniacs. They will not want to lose. So yeah, a loss to either would be devastating. But it'll be a, it should make great viewing. That's the most important thing. And great fight to be made with these two watching on. So uh, let's enjoy. And of course, outside of the competition, we also have five brilliant fights we need to remember yes. to look forward to. And there are also five fights that could be very important, not only in the landscape of some divisions, but particularly in these fighters' careers in, in terms of moving forward to the next level. Without a shadow of a doubt, you've got former world champions, world title contenders, you've got prospects, you, you've got a, a, a massive mixture here, and it's just 5v5 really good fights, so I can't wait. You know, It's interesting to see certain fights being made and certain people on certain teams so, yeah, it should make for great viewing. Well, let's talk about some of those fights. Obviously, Eddie Hearn picked two weight categories. Frank Warren picked two weight categories as well. And His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh also threw the heavyweight division into the mix. But let's start with the 126-pound division, uh, the featherweights. Ray Ford against Nick Ball, WBA World Featherweight title on the line. When you take yourself back to March, Nick Ball went to Saudi, took on Ray Vargas, gave away all that height, disadvantage, didn't he? But many thought he'd done enough that I night did. to become world champion. Were you one of those people? I thought he'd done enough. Don't get me wrong, it was raised a tight, it was raised a thin, but I just thought he'd done enough on the night. He was very unfortunate not to get the decision. Uh, with the knockdowns as well, you know, as I say, I thought he'd done great. And Rayford really had to dig in, didn't he, in that last fight against Otterbeck Komatov. I think he stopped him in the, in the last seven seconds yeah. of that 12th round to become world champion. Many thought that would have been his last fight mm. at featherweight and he looked to move up to, to super featherweight at 130 pounds, but perhaps this opportunity too big to turn down. It will be, and as I say, it's a big one, and we can't wait to see it. This should be a super exciting fight, really good from start to finish, and it's one I can't wait to see. When you look at the, the two styles, how does Ray Ford keep a fighter like Nick Ball off him for 12 rounds, who we know is going to be coming at him from the opening belt? You can't keep a fighter like Nick Ball off you, so you have, to, you have to put a dent in him, you have to get his respect, and I'm not sure Ray can. And, and I think that may be the difference. I don't know. It's just a really, really compelling fight. I mean, do you think Nick Ball can be here? Can he be deterred? Uh, it's yet to be seen. And it's styles make fights. But I love Nick Ball's style. He's just non-stop from the get-go. He's on your chest. He's letting his hands go. And he's ferocious. I can't wait to see him. This is your first pick. Liverpool bias aside now. Yeah. Mr Bellew, who wins? Ray Ford, Nick Ball. I'm going to go Nick Ball. By what method? Because that's important in this. I, in my mind, I'm thinking he's learned from the, from the last fight and he's going to want to take out the judge's hand, so I'm going Nick Ball by stoppage. Nick Ball by stoppage. So let's just run over the rules quickly because it's one point for a points win, two points for a stoppage win, and of course the captains we're going to talk about in just a moment. That is double trouble, four points for a knockout and two points for a points win as well. So, so far... Terrible start for Eddie Hearn and Matram, according to Tony Bellew. It's Matram nil, Queensbury two. Four more fights to talk about. We'll, we'll go up in chronological order in terms of the weights. We go from the featherweights up to 160 yeah. pounds uh, middleweight. The battle of the unbeatens yeah. in this one. This is a really intriguing fight. It's one that was talked about in the ring after Amo Williams' last win in February mm -hmm. in Vegas. But again, because of what was involved in terms of the platforms and perhaps a few politics, it was a, one of them fights we probably thought no, would have just fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. 
so glad we get to see Hamza Shiraz and Ahmed Williams. This is another intriguing matchup. Hamza Shiraz is huge at the waist, tall, long, rangy, uses it well. And then you've got Ahmed Williams who likes to have a fight. You know, we were only left disappointed. We thought uh, him and Felix Cash was going to clash, and then the number of times they come up close to each other, it didn't work out or materialise. And now we see him uh, against Hamza Shiraz. It's a really good fight, you know. <clears throat> How is Shiraz going to cope under pressure? I'm not so sure. I I'm slightly edging towards Amo Williams in this one. Mm. I think he's coming on a 13 fight knockout streak as well, Hamza Shiraz. Coming off that, that first round knockout against Liam Williams. I yeah. believe he's only boxed 12 rounds in total, though, through his last five fights, I believe. This is Amo's first scheduled 12 rounder. It'll be interesting to see if it does get to the championship rounds, how both men adjust. It will. It'll be a massive factor because the first time completing 12 rounds is always the hardest because you're always leaving something in the tank thinking, can I do it, can I do it, can I do it? Well, whoever leaves too much in the tank in this fight could come up short, and you know, it's one there to be seen. Each other's hardest fight, would you say? Without a shadow of a doubt. And in terms of ammo, he's certainly a, a unique character. He's walking around with his tiger tail attached to him at the, the media day and at the press conference, but in terms of star potential, which is what Eddie Hearn sees, what have you been impressed with? He's adventurous, he can punch, he's game. He doesn't really play too much attention to his defence. He's an all-out attack fighter and gets stuck right in. So I think for someone like Hamza Shiraz, he's going to want to use the reach and the length, but I just think Amo Williams counters and that all-round boxing IQ of... The Americans like to fight upside and inside and up close, and us as domestic British fights, we tend to like to fight long. So it's probably going to be a battle of who can... Who can, who can win the, each other's fight, you know what I'm saying? Can Hamza Shearer keep it long? Can Amo Williams get up close and make it rough and ready? Uh, it's yet to be seen. I just favour Amo Williams. I don't know why, I'm just I'm edging towards him. And it's important that you give us the method as well. Is it? I bet it is. <laughs> uh, For any of the fighters listening to this, this is all Tony's opinions. I just way, don't so. know if he can stop him. I think he can't work Hamza Shearer's, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean... Okay, well, you tell me to put my neck on the block, aren't you? I'm going Ammo Williams stoppage. Stoppage, so it's two each now. Two each. Whereas well, we head into fight three, things are, are very much alive here then. I guess also when you look, the, these captain picks, Hamza Shiraz is Frank Warren's captain, which, which shows you that he has a lot of confidence in his man, because yeah. these are the fights that could really decide the whole thing. But what do you make of him making him captain as well, finally? He's a, he's a, he's a Frank Warren fighter, he's a Queensbury fighter, and he's been there his whole career. So. I understand why he's playing, placing his trust in him, and especially last time out, was it Liam Williams last time out? Yeah. He was, uh, he was very, very good that night, to be fair, and he was very explosive, but make no mistake, Liam Williams isn't Ammo Williams, so we'll see. Well, from 160, the Battle of the Unbeaten's up to 175 pounds. This is another intriguing clash in the light heavyweight division. Craig Richards meets Willie Hutchinson. Obviously, when you look at Willie Hutchinson, one of Scotland's most successful ever amateurs, yes. just that one defeat to Lennox Clark, I believe, in 2021. Craig Richards is an interesting one. He is. He's almost been a bit, I don't want to call him a nearly man, but you know, he, he, is, he came exactly close against is. Dimitri Bivol behind closed doors. He's done brilliant. He felt he did enough against Joshua Boatsy in the Battle of South London. He can't really afford to be a nearly man in this fight, though. This is a, a fight you'd think he can't really afford to lose at this stage. This is his time to shine. I really like Craig, Craig Richards. I think he's a really good fighter. It's just, it must be so frustrating for the people who coach him because he has all the tools in the box. He has all the ability. And <clears throat> he just doesn't turn it on in the fight early enough. It's, it's, we even seen it against Dimitri Bivol later on in the fight. He gets into his rhythm, he gets into his slot, and he, and he finds a way. In this fight, he needs to come out and put it on Willie Hutchins. He really does. And... I think he can. He'll know the importance of this fight. Um, with that early defeat in Hutchins' career, it's kind of, there's a benchmark there. You know what you've got to do for Craig Richards. Go out there, put it on him, and, and get the job done. So Craig Richards has got no excuse. This is a big, big spectacle. This is a big, big platform to be on, and it's a big opportunity for him. He has to take this with both hands. He struggled a little bit with an activity, hasn't he? Since that yeah. Boatsy fight, I think he had 21 months out the ring, then returned yeah. in January on the next-gen show against Boris Crichton. But... This is his second fight with Shane McGuigan. You mentioned about the coaches there. Do you expect a, a different Craig Richards? Can he change at this stage of his career too much? Of course he can change. He can add and he can learn. Uh, and to be fair, I do rate Shane McGuigan as a coach. I think as a boxing coach, he's a very good coach. He improves fighters. The, the improvements he's, he's, he's done with Chris Billum-Smith, with Lawrence Coley, uh, was absolutely phenomenal. It really is. So 
I don't, I'm not too sure on his management skills, but as, as his trainer skills are second to none, I do think Shane McGuigan's a good coach. Willie Hutchinson coming full of energy, full of confidence, as you'd expect. Do you like that energy? I think he's picking himself to win this fight by knockout as well. Oh, OK. Well, that's, that's a lively one. I mean, I definitely don't think he can stop Craig Richards. Uh, and to be honest, I'm probably going to go... Oh, I don't know. Do you know so what's two each time? Do you know what this one could be? And I'm not, and you're going to laugh, but this one could end up being a draw. It, oh, could, no. it could be a really difficult fight. Well, that's the only rule I didn't explain. Zero points for a draw. Wow. Well, you're going to get you'll get stick for that. That's splinters. Uh, okay. Well, <clears throat> off the fence. Well, with, well, well, Willie Hutchins is the more established, just that the more established amateur uh, with pedigree. But Craig Richards has by far more experience as a more pro. experienced professional fighter and against far better fighters. Do you know what? Okay, I'll go Craig Richards' points. Points. Are you happy now? Yeah, well, 3 2. It just means the scores keep going, and that oh, takes oh. us from the light heavyweights. As long as you're happy, oh, no, the, fa the fans. Box boxing's happy time. That's what that's all that matters. Terrible company man answer there. We move to the big boys, of course, the first of two heavyweight clashes. This one, Philip Hergovic against Daniel Dubois. I mentioned earlier at the start that, you know, it's been talked about a big fight with Anthony Joshua. We can see Wembley Stadium over there yes, in the can. distance, just out the window there, the arch, of Wonderful course, here in London. View. Beautiful view, but we, we've talked about the landscape and how it might change after the undisputed fight with Fury and Usyk. The winner of Hergovic Dubois may well land a shot against Anthony Joshua later yeah. in this year. That has been spoken about for the IBF world title. What are the big questions about Philip Hergovic versus Daniel Dubois, in your opinion? How much does Philip Hergovic want it? How much will inactivity ruin this brilliant fight? Because he has got the ability, Philip Hergovic. So uh, it's yet to be seen. We haven't. I think he should have a loss on his record. I believe Z I believe Zilli's hand beat him. Many do. I, I really think he deserved that fight. But this is judging, uh, this is boxing, and he's still undefeated. And I'll be honest, I don't think Daniel Dubois is going to defeat him. I think, I, I genuinely believe Philip Hegovic is going to stop Daniel Dubois. Will you not be confident, though? Dubois, after beating Baby Miller, obviously after the, the controversy in the Usyk fight, do you not think he'll be heading into this fight with... With some more confidence, perhaps? Baby Miller turned up, mate. He was just a big mattress with arms on. He was huge. He just... He was absolutely ginormous. It was no, He just absorbed everything. He's the most durable mattress I've ever seen in my life. Durable mattress? He just... <laughs> mate, he <laughs> just heard that before. He just absorbed everything. Literally. He just took... The kitchen sink was thrown around. So, yeah. Don't read too much into that. I mean, Daniel Dubois had his own way all night. He really did, and... I like Daniel. I think he's, I think he comes across as a lovely individual, a really nice guy. But I'm, I just I don't know. Something tells me there's something lacking there at, the, at, at a certain level, and I think that will be exposed again against Philip Hegovic. We well, said how much does Philip want it? I do believe he's also going to be missing the birth of his daughter away in, in America in training camp. So perhaps that, that tells you mate, that tells me exactly how seriously how he's taking it. So you said Hergovic stoppage. Yeah. So I think that takes us to, to five two matchroom. But this is where. It could get important. I think it might already be over, actually, in, in Tony Bellew's eyes. But perhaps the main event now, Deontay Wilder. I mean, when you look at boxing, it's a mad old world, isn't it? Who it's would have insane. thought a few years ago that Deontay Wilder and Eddie Hearn would have been stood side by side, as he's yeah. El Capitano as well? It's a... Uh, money can do strange things. <laughs> they really can. Well, I'll change that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought... Eddie Hearn and Deontay Wilder will be teaming up. But this is what His Excellency, Mr. Turkey Al Sheikh, has provided. He's done... It's unbelievable, it really is. And fair play to him. He's making things happen that have never happened in boxing before. Rivalries are becoming bromances. Uh, and the big fights are being made. And that's all that really matters. Take away everyone's politics aside, people's opinions of each other. The most important thing here is the best are fighting the best. And... Zili Zhang against Deontay Wilder is a brilliant matchup of ferocious punches. The only downside I have to this is I have no idea what either fight has got left because I go off both of the last performances against Joseph Parker. One guy didn't throw a punch in Deontay Wilder, and the other guy had Joseph Parker out on his Twice, feet. Twice, yeah, had him down. And was just walking around the ring smiling, like it was some kind of joke. I could not believe it. Now, I don't want to detract or take anything away from Joseph Parker, because he'd done a job on both of them. He, you know, 
the smaller guy went in there, outboxed both of them, put it on them at times, moved about, used his ring savvy and boxing IQ to defeat both fighters. But them fights were both their fights to lose. Deontay Wilder has it in his hands to wipe anyone out. Zeli Zhang had his guy out twice and gave it up. So I just feel, I don't know what's going to happen in this one. 63 knockouts between them. I just don't, I just have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, if the Deontay Wilder turns up that I've seen in the past, in the past past, then I have to favour Deontay Wilder by knockout. But if the Deontay Wilder turns up that four jokes about, he's getting stopped, he's getting knocked out. So I just, I just, I don't know which one's going to turn up. So I, I literally, it's a fight. I'm intrigued. I can't wait to see, but I have no idea what's going to happen. I, I literally, I, I couldn't. So no matter how much you, no matter how much you push me, like one of them are getting knocked out. I just don't know who it's going to be, but one of them are getting knocked out. And and for the life of me, I just, do you know what? I want to say Zhang knocks Wilder out because of the way Wilder boxed against... I knew you were going to say that. I get a feeling you're fancy Zili Zhang. I, I do fancy Zili Zhang because I know he's going to let his hands go and throw. I just don't know where Deontay's mindset's at. I just think he needs someone to just explain to him, listen, mate, you can punch really, really hard. Just let your hands go. Forget about your technique. You're never going to be this great boxer with a wonderful, fantastic jab. Do me a favour. Just go in and let your hands go. Just do what you just do what it says on the tin. You're wild. That's what you are. That's your superpower. You are wild and powerful. Go and let the arms go. Well, I believe with the Zhang knockout, that would take it to 5 4. But this is the best thing about this 5v5. As we said at the start, so many great competitive fights. They are real pick and fights, let's be honest, because it's taking Tony Bellew a lot of time to throw his predictions into the hat. It has. Here. If you are anywhere, make sure you're watching this fight, all five fights live. On the zone, June the 1st, 2024. As I said at the start, pride, bragging rights, promotional supremacy, Eddie Hearn versus Frank Warren, Matchroom versus Queensbury. It's all on the line in a Riyadh season original, live from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, live on the zone, June 1st. Me and Tony will be there. You should be as well. Queensbury better than Matchroom. You are having a laugh, Frankie baby. You've been running your mouth off far too long. This is it. Be ready. This is the moment. There's gonna be a war. You're gonna find out who the governor is. I'm bringing five of my best. You bring five of yours. June 1st on the zone. Five. Be five. Pack your bags. We're off to Riyadh. Let's go. No prisoners. Bang, bang. Daniel Dubois, you are getting smashed. <laughs> Mechanical destruction. Left hook, right hand. <laughs> He's mental. <laughs> Power, 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 speed, my speed, my IQ, tall, powerful. I'm just everything, man. What are his weaknesses? Slow feet. I think his big head. My car. I'm aiming for that the whole night. Nick Buck, you too small. <laughs> who's ready to dice and who's not? Knocking your lights out. Queensby Promotions are going to win. We got to win it. Match room all day, baby. Only one result required victory. That's all that matters to me. Watch 5v5. Live on the zone. Let's go. Bob Squad!